If you love last week's episode where I took these three artworks and I transformed them, then you're really gonna love today's tips and advice. So I have these three brand new artworks submitted to me by my YouTube community, and you won't believe what I'm gonna do to them. Make sure you watch this whole video all the way through to learn my tips, advice, and tutorials for how you can take your digital art to the next level. All right, y'all, so here's our first artwork submitted to us, and this one comes from Adrian, AKA Plaxite. Really cool character design in this really nice dynamic environment. Looks like they have just gone on this huge rampage. So Flexite tells me that this is their first D&D character that they play with their buddies. Let me go ahead and give you some tips and advice on how you can improve this bad boy because I see some crazy potential in this and you won't believe it either. The main problem that I see here in this artwork is a very common one, which is that when there's gonna be a really intense light source, it just oversaturates. And what I mean by this is that this whole image is basically just one giant orange picture. When I look at this, I'm just not sure where I'm supposed to look. There's not exactly a focal point. So I wanna show you how you can use color to create this effect. Now, before I even get into that though, here's the first thing I wanna do. When I take a look at this background right here, it really is distracting and it pulls my eye into it because everything is so detailed. All my eye goes to is boom, right there. So I actually wanna delete that first. So actually the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna annihilate that entire upper sky area. All right, great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna put some stuff back into there and show you what you would wanna do here. Now for the next step here, what I really wanna do is I wanna to start to bring some focus and attention onto the character because I think right now it's a little bit too much on the background and it's also, I'm noticing that the character is getting lost in this composition. So the next thing I wanna do here is I wanna go ahead and I wanna create a gradient map. And the way that I get that to apply over the image is I'm gonna switch the blending mode to color. And then from there, I'm gonna pick an orange and a blue. And the reason why I do that, and just to show you these two pictures right here and here, is that whenever there is an intense scene like this, even in a forest fire, we need to have hot and cool zones. And this allows us to essentially bring the character into focus. And then what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna go over to my layer mask settings here and using a nice big soft round brush is I'm just gonna go around my character because I only want it to affect kind of the sky area. Because again, in my reference pictures, I noticed that the sky still does remain a little bit blue and that'll help to cool off the rest of the character and the scene so that I get good contrast. Now I'm gonna add a lot more color, contrast, and emphasis throughout the character, but first I wanna address a few anatomical things. And so when I look at the face here, she's kinda got this face that's like, come get you some. Like it looks really cool, I like it. So I wanna include that like kinda psychopathic tendency in her expression. So now what I'm gonna do here, just to emphasize that psychopathic look here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slightly restructure the eyes. I want her to have a little bit more curvature in her bottom lids, especially this will help her look like she's kind of squinting a little bit. And I also wanna add some slightly darker values underneath the eyes and definitely in between the eyes up into the forehead because if you ever see like an anime character when they start to look really nuts this is typically where you're going to see that they're going to like all of a sudden just magically shift the light source to create and emphasize this type of like crazy effect on a character and boom here we go now we have this version right here and i think that this also adds a lot of nice intensity and contrast so i see her eyes they don't get lost like they used to now the next area I wanna focus on is gonna be the legs because when I look at this pose, there's something a bit awkward about it. The fact that one leg is totally straight and one leg is bent, this kinda of gives me the impression that like she's got a potty a little bit, but she's like, I don't know where to go because I just burnt down the whole forest. I can't go in a tree. So when I take a look at this left leg, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slightly re-angle it. So I'm gonna kinda of simulate this leg as if it's almost like that cute anime girl kind of pose that you see right here. And that's gonna allow me to get a little bit more believable structure and anatomy into it. And also the fact that the leg is shifting totally differently away from where it was before, I thought was a little confusing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm also going to take a look at that right foot. And I see how it's kind of arcing up a little bit. I thought that was a little awkward. So what I wanna do is I wanna tilt it down. I'm gonna ground it. I'm gonna just gonna blend that in really quickly too. I see that this pose I think looks a lot better. It looks more sturdy, more grounded. Like this character could actually stand because before I thought that she looked very off balance. Whenever you have an illustration, you need to be able to separate and understand where does the character end and the background start. And just as I show you right here, like this is the overall silhouette. But when I go ahead and I turn off that, it's really hard to understand what you should be looking at. So we're gonna use a gradient map again, but focus it 
on the character. So in this gradient map, I'm actually using the exact same blue to orange colors that I used before, and they're both just very desaturated colors, by the way, because I don't want it to be too intense. And basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take, again, my eraser, I'm gonna edit the layer mask. And I like doing it this way because it's easy to shift back and forth. Like, do I want it, do I not? And using this process, I wanna bring a lot more desaturated areas and some slightly bluer areas into a lot of the character on this. And then this way, you can see as I'm doing this that you're starting to understand, hey, there's a person here versus this is a very bright, an intense background. And this is something that I felt was missing initially. Now, I think that this could still be pumped up just a little bit because even though, yeah, I can see the character a little bit more, you need to have essentially whenever you have a really bright illustration like this, you need to have areas that are hot and cold so that you can understand where your eye is supposed to look. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer and I switch that layer blending mode to color and I'm using my brushes and I'm basically gonna switch that blending mode on the brush itself to multiply so it'll show up nice and neat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more blues into this. That way it's gonna cool down that character. So again, she's really gonna pop off of that background and I think it's gonna look really beautiful. So just to show you the original and the new version right here, you can see that there's a great difference between the two. You can definitely read the character a lot better and you can see the color temperature differences. Thus, you know where your eye is supposed to look. So Flagsite, thank you so much for submitting this and I hope that this really helps you. And if this helped you, definitely let me know about it down below. All right, y'all, so here's our next image, boom, by Eliana. This is a really cool image, and I like what you're going for on this. Hey, this kind of looks like if James Bond and Kai Kisuke from Guilty Gear had a baby, it would be this fella. And they told me that the idea behind it is all about the move. They use red lighting to give it a dangerous feel to it. When I asked specifically, what do they need help with? They said, mostly need help with blending in here. All right, Eliana, so buckle up, everybody, along with her, because... I'm gonna give you so much more than you asked for because I see some really awesome, crazy potential in this. We got an elephant in the room we need to address. And it is, uh, ooh, that head. This thing is basically the entire size of his torso and three heads should take up the trunk of the body on a male figure like this. Go ahead and try and do that pose. Like have your back totally away from whatever you're looking at and try and wrench your neck all the way around. And then please, for the love of God, stop because you're gonna die if your neck cracks doing that. So unless this character is an owl, <laughs> this is totally impossible. So before I get into anything on here, what I definitely wanna do is I wanna fix up the anatomy and the proportions of this so that this is gonna look like a more proper figure. And you're gonna see that you're gonna see a lot less face on this. And if you're ever gonna do a character from the back that is how it should look. And what I'm also gonna do here is instead of just using pure reds and, and pure saturated colors, which I see is a really big issue for a lot of people, especially in their first time using really bright, intense uh, light sources like this, is that I'm gonna use more desaturated colors. And that's gonna make it look kind of bluish or more gray, but that is what you need to do. You need to bring that into it so that everything isn't this intense heat. Just like in our last example that I showed you too, you need to have more color temperature separation so that it is understandable. So also in this too, aside from what I just talked about, you're also gonna see me go ahead and address the face. I wanna go ahead and give it a much better profile. So you can definitely see now that this is properly how a person can physically, anatomically stand and begin to turn towards this. You're not gonna see a whole lot of the face. It's maybe a quarter of it. So as I go ahead and I draw out over this, I wanna show you this is what the anatomical structure of somebody who's actually going to assume this pose would be in. And you're gonna see that the overall left shoulder is going to be a lot more pronounced and the right shoulder is gonna be a bit more truncated. What I wanna do too is I wanna create this nice angle down like he's standing very confidently as well. So as I go ahead and I start to work up the back, you're gonna see me adjust things like the collar. And I'm also gonna heavily, heavily work a lot of the folds here. And if you're not sure how folds should look, everybody, then you should definitely look up some references for that, okay? And it's also gonna be something that, just to be honest, folds are gonna be kind of like the bane of your art existence for a long time until you just get a lot of experience with them and you just kind of understand how they're going to go. And again with this too, as I'm going to be working up the back and I'm shifting from the upper back down to the lower back, down to the 
uh, hip area and redistributing that arm as well, you're going to see me use a lot more desaturated colors because again, if my light source is coming from the top left and it's also going to be something that's really bright and intense, then it's going to eventually cool down on the opposite side. And you need to show this so that everything doesn't just boom, punch you in the face with this big intense heat of color. We have a much more believable pose where it's slightly turned to a little bit more of almost like a quarter, three quarter pose. Now, the next area I want to focus on is the hand. Whenever you're going to draw anybody holding a gun, there's a certain type of grip that you need to have for it. So as I take a look at this hand right here, I believe this is a very soft grip. What I definitely want to do is I want to draw out like you see here, what a firmer grip on this as if he was going to go turn around and shoot somebody with it. So as I'm painting over this, what you're getting going to see is a lot of common themes that I've done before. I'm going to bring a lot more desaturated colors into it. Another thing too, I noticed when I was painting over this is that there's no trigger on that gun. It's just a big empty void. So I want to go ahead and I want to draw that in so that there's a sense of placement for where the actual trigger finger is going to be. And you're going to see a lot more of a firmer grip on that. And again, if you don't know how this is going to look, two things you can do. Number one, look up a reference. Number two, go ahead and just grab something that's rounded with yourself and stick out your trigger finger like that. And then you can go ahead and take a picture of it. That's generally what I do with all of my illustrations. And there we go. So I feel that this is much better. And now there's just two more areas that I do want to address. Now let's start with the hair. I did abandon the hair before. Don't worry, I didn't forget about it, okay? So I do want to go back to the hair now. So to help you out with drawing hair and overall hairlines, what you want to do first is you want to imagine that that character is bald. So you're going to see this line here that indicates that. As you can see right here, as I've made these guidelines, this is the way that the hair would grow and flow away. And you need to keep that direction in mind as you're going to be adding in any type of hair. So as I'm doing this, I want to keep the light sourcing in mind. I do get the sense that this character's hair is going to be of that kind of platinum color. So with that overall, you're going to see me go ahead and I'm going to add some light areas. I'm going to add some dark areas. I'm going to add some saturated areas. I'm also going to add some desaturated areas and some very dark areas as well. Basically, what I want to do is I want to start off by going ahead and just kind of defining out what are those basic zones where the light source is, where it is not as well, where it's going to be dark. And then I'm going to be painting things in just like the ribbons. And I like this character's kind of overall messiness in the hair. And you can see me kind of establish a quick silhouette of it. And now I'm going in and I'm adding in little tiny strands. There's only a couple custom brushes I'm using for this. It's really just hard round brush work. And it's quite simple and easy when you really get down to it. And what you always want to do again is just bear in mind your light source and overall the overall lust of the hair that you want. Some hair is going to be shinier than others. So this is pretty cool. I'm liking this one so far. And you also notice I forgot about the scar earlier, so I went ahead and I added that in too. So y'all, the last part I want to work on is the end of this gun here, because this sounds really nitpicky, but like for myself, like when I look and see anything that's in like sci-fi for guns, I like them to have a sound to them. Like when I look at a gun, I kind of imagine it turns on. What does it sound like? And I want to add something that makes this gun look more powerful than this little tiny cone that comes out of it. So as I start drawing this gun in, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to add on to the muzzle of it. I'm also going to expand out my canvas to accommodate this. And what I want to do is I want to add kind of a little bit more barrel on it. And then what I want to do too is add some more glowing parts, kind of signifying that this is like a laser pistol. It's not just like something that is a regular pistol that's, I don't know, it shoots out farts like the Minions gun or it doesn't shoot out sound or anything else like that. But I want to just get the sense of like, if you got shot with this, you get pretty messed up. So just to show you, here's where we started and here's where we are now. And I hope that you've learned a lot about why you need to control your color temperature and why you need to use muted colors in it. Because again, if you've got really saturated light sources, you can't just have all hot temperature colors. If this helped you, let me know about it down below. And Eliana, thank you so much for submitting this one. This was really fun to make. And I'm sorry that I might have taken this a little bit out of the anime context that you wanted, but it was fun nonetheless. Hey y'all, if you're gonna get great value out of this, and maybe you're looking for somebody like me who's going to go ahead and teach you how you can make your art totally next level, then I just want to let you know, friends, I run my own art mentorship. Go ahead and fill out the Google form down below if you're serious about your art and you really know that you have a passion and you have a future in art. Fill that out and I will reach out to you to learn what it would be like if you were my art client and you were my mentee. Now, our next image comes from Jazz Wolf Blaze that gives me this image right here. And Jazz, I just want to let you know that I'm going to need to curse you for a minute here because now thanks to you my computer thinks that i like my little pony art so thank you so much for that does this make me a brony pony Vegas sister no 
Don't tell me, I don't wanna know. They said the idea was a redraw of a request they did back in 2017. They wondered if their shading and rendering is okay and if there are other ways that they could go about improving the painting and they're open to trying different methods. Jazz, I definitely got you on this one. Even yes, now my computer thinks that I'm a brony. But as far as animals are concerned, like this is pretty neat. However though, I definitely see some big things that we can do with color and texture and contrast in here again, just to bring the character and flesh that out a little bit more. So when I go ahead and I look into that ear, my friends, um, I'm really confused on what its anatomy is like. It kind of looks like if a pony had cauliflower ear, um, that's kind of <laughs> what I imagine it would look like. Uh, it's really confusing to me how it's bending and folding. So this is the first thing I want to fix. So really simply, I just want to start off by going ahead and just defining out a little bit more where the inner part of the ear is, where the folds are going to be, where some lightness and darkness is going to be. And I'm going to be using throughout this entire tutorial you see today, just a really simple fluffy hairbrush. This is a very fluffy pony. Pony. feel a lot better about this. Let's move on. The next area I want to adjust on here is going to be contrast because as you look at this, yes, it's very nice, but it's also kind of hard. It's a little bit money to understand because everything's the same color. It's hard to understand what the anatomy exactly is. So I want to add some more shadows and contrast onto this. So as I go ahead and I start to utilize some more contrast techniques onto here, basically what I'm doing is I'm using some of the blues and purples that you already have in here, Jazz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some selections I want to carve out some areas of this. So I want to carve out like, for example, where the hair meets the face, where the chin meets the chest, definitely as the chest comes up and rounds up and same thing like with the belly, I want to add more sense of roundness to this. And essentially I want to really exaggerate the fact that there is a light source coming from the top somewhere. And therefore, if there's a light source coming from the top, then there has to be shadows from the opposite side. It's just basic cylindrical anatomy. here. Now that I have this, I want to go ahead and I want to paint over this so that I'm going to have a better sense of texture and I want to add a little bit more color into this. So now what you're going to see me doing is I'm heavily going to bring that kind of furry fluffiness into this entire image. And I'm doing that again, just with a big fur brush, it's very simple to do. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna to transition towards the bottom of everything where shadows are is gonna be this deeper desaturated red. And then I also wanna bring, I like that kind of yellowy color. So I wanna bring that in and bring that into a little bit more of the peachy or areas as well of color. And then that way that's gonna add essentially some different color temperature variations where shadows are going to be a little bit more on the cooler spectrum and the areas that are lit better are gonna be on the hotter spectrum. Next up on here, y'all, let's go after that hair. So I think that overall the hair isn't bad, but it just feels really flat. I'm talking on the top of the head and I'm talking on the tail area too here. It just feels really flat. It doesn't have a lot of sense of volume to it. So let me show you what you can do about that. So as we learned in the last example, you want to establish a grow and flow to it. And that's why first thing I want to do here is I'm going to use, and you're going to watch me use just a big lasso tool. And then I'm going to carve out just some basic stripes on here. Basically when you're approaching long hair, think of it like ribbons, just stacked ribbons. And you want to establish quickly a grow and flow where shadows are going to be, where lights are going to be. All right. So now I want to teach you a mega giga tip to make your hair look crazy next level awesome. So one of the things that I definitely recognize about how to make hair look more natural is it can't have these nice clean edges to them. I see a lot of people do this. So instead what you want to do, especially if you're going for more realism, semi-realism is you want to add what I'm going to call these wisps. And these are going to be kind of line segments that you're going to add all around it. And it creates again, kind of a messier look about it. That's not intended for it to be disheveled or anything like that. Like it doesn't have to look like Hermione in the first Harry Potter movie, nothing to that extent, but it overall just gives this nice effect where it looks like it's naturally laid hair because naturally laid hair is a little bit frizzy apart. So if you bring that into your artwork and especially into your hair, it definitely adds a great level to it. Like you see right here. So just to show you all again, this is where we started and boom, that's what we got right now. So we got a lot more contrast emphasis. We have a lot more texture in it too. Jess, thanks so much for submitting this to me. I hope that you learned a lot. And if so, definitely let me know about it down below. So friends, I know that you love this. And if so, definitely make sure you watch part three of this right here.